Kids. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to say what a pleasure it is to speak to Mr. Robeson. Um, my wife and I have been following you for, for years now. We have a, a nine-year-old son with Asperger's, and um, it took about four years for them to diagnose. Um, and it's funny, he's actually um, experiencing a lot of the, the things that you've been speaking about with Cubby right now, uh, as far as, uh, you know, he, he has these these dreams. He wants to you know, build nuclear power plants. He wants to. Um, he's, he's he's extremely mechanical. Um, and you know the funny thing is, earlier on, we didn't know what it was when he was about four years old. He was afraid of um, any kind of toys that had a face. Um, if he saw something on television, like, like a car accident, he would get extremely upset because the car was destroyed. Um, so it. it it was very difficult for us to really figure out what was going on. Um, and then I started finding uh, some videos uh, on John, with John Robeson, and um, things started to come together. Uh, but we've got some wonderful people that are helping out now. Ken, it's, thank you for calling, first of all. Have you read John's book, Look Me in the Eye? Well, it's, it's kind of funny because... Uh, my wife read the book, mm -hmm. and I actually watched a, um, I guess you would say, like a, a documentary with uh, Mr. Robeson. And one day, she and I just happened to be talking. She said, oh, I, I'm reading this great book. And she started describing some of the things in the book. And I said, I've watched him on television. <laughs> and the, the two came together. We had no idea that either of us were kind of reading and watching the same same person. Well, it must be encouraging to you then if you see somebody like your son who, you know, has grown up and is indeed independent. It's, you know, it's wonderful. <clears throat> We've got some incredible school programs here, and um, he also does an after-school program, which really emphasizes the socialization, which was a, bit, which was a huge uh, problem. He, he, he himself is in Cub Scouts, and that is still a difficult situation because, you know, it is such a social thing. Um, so we're working through that right now, and just he's he's understanding pretty well. Um, he had a lot of uh, developmental um, issues in the beginning with his schooling uh, before he was diagnosed. So he actually lost a lot of you know the early de de uh, developmental stuff, um, which we're trying to still catch up on now. Um, but he seems to be progressing very well. He's still very emotional, and. Uh, you know, he has his moments. He's, he's come to realization that he does have something called Asperger's, and that really upsets him, though. Um, mm -hmm. it, he feels he's, he's different, and he's, he's, he keeps saying he's damaged, and he has no life. And so well, I, I speak to that in the Be Different book, you know, about that very thing, and, and you might be able to read him some passages of that, and that might be some comfort to him. Yeah. John, give us... is really good, too, for that, you know, for socializing kids. Mm -hmm. John, what are some some things that Ken can say to his son when he feels sad about the fact that he is different and feels damaged and is starting to notice how these differences are obviously interfering, you know, with his with his socialization or his functioning with his peers? Well, I think that the most effective thing you can do is uh, help him <clears throat> get success. Mm -hmm. You know, telling him things only goes so far. Like in scouting, if you could get together with him and you could compete like in the Pinewood Derby to make those cars that run down the Hot Wheels track and race and stuff, if you can do things like that, you can, he can be a success. You know, he could be in the top five in the, in the Pinewood Derby and his Cub Scout pack and stuff. Yep. And um, I think that that was really the best thing for me to go out and do things that people recognized, help him do projects that people will see as good. Mm -hmm. uh, as he gets older, you know, they have things like they merit badges in scouting. My son, he got, he got like 40 merit badges throughout scouting, and he was really proud of that. Yeah. It, I, you know, you know I, cause I wonder at what age, this is, you know, a good question for you, um, you know, the, he, he's, he's, he shows strength in areas like mechanics um, and, you know, electronics. He's very interested in electronics, but his, his, his delayed um, educational development is kind of holding him back from that kind of stuff. Um, at what age do they really kind of fall into their own and they find that, that thing that they're, like, you know, hyper advanced in? Well, it, it could happen when he's 12, and it could happen when he's 22. Yeah. You know, one thing for, to keep in mind is that 
um, the delay in uh, the developmental delay of Asperger's might mean that he's uh, say his his mind, her technology might be that of a twelve year old at age nine, mm-hmm. but his social skills might be that of say a three year old. Exactly. But if he um, <clears throat> once he gets to be sixteen. If his social skills then are those of a 12-year-old and his mind is, you know, his intellectual mind is out of a 25-year-old, then he's in a much stronger position. So the older he gets, the less the developmental delay can hold him back in that regard. Oh. Right now it's really profound because it has him as like a child level in the one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yet he's advanced. Right. So what, what kind of suggestions do you have for Ken? How can he still foster these interests that his son has and obviously a clear talent in this area? Um, do you just recommend that, that Ken explore creative ways for him to, to you know, dabble in electronics? Well, like, for example, if he's interested in math puzzles, you could introduce him to something like the, the binomial cubes, the trinomial cubes they use in Montessori school. They have all these uh, puzzle-solving cubes where kids can <clears throat> learn mathematical concepts without actually knowing the written symbols and numbers. Mm-hmm. So there are teaching systems out there that your son could probably use even though he doesn't have academic development, like puzzle solving. Mm -hmm. And if you could get your son interested in that, have him solve puzzles with you, you don't have to read to solve a Rubik's Cube. Yes. And um, and if he could become really good at that, that can develop uh, very powerful reasoning skills. And the beauty of it is he doesn't really need conventional education to succeed at it. And, And then... As he gets educated, he's going to be able to apply those reasoning skills to be very successful in regular classes. Uh, that's, that's great information. Definitely. Thank you. Ken, we want to thank you for, for your call. And um, I'm sure it's nice for John to, to hear from listeners that have been tracking been following him and following him. him. And his books are great. I'm sure you're looking forward to his newest book, Raising Cubby. I think he's going to have some amazing stories and, and really 